This episode was made possible by Brilliant. Hi everyone, I'm Jade. Lovely to meet you, or see you again. In the movie The Matrix, people are plugged into a virtual world without them knowing it. All of their experiences are completely simulated and don't correspond to the real world around them. It's a classic piece of science fiction. Or is it? What if I told you that cosmologists, the people who study the large-scale structure of our universe, actually argue over whether our universe is really just a simulation? In the cosmologist version, the idea is that all that really exists is a single brain, which simulates all of the senses that make up your experiences. Everything you've ever tasted, smelled, touched, all of your memories, your entire life, from the day you're born until the day you die. This all-simulating brain is called a Boltzmann brain. This sounds insane when I just say it like that. So before we get into why this is something legit science even talk about, we need to cover some basic physics. Before we start, this is part one of a collaboration with Isaac Arthur, who makes really cool videos about space and philosophy. He'll be popping in and out of this video, and make sure to check out part two on his channel afterwards. All right. In any physical system, it's often really useful to quantify the amount of ordered structure in that system. We can do this by counting the number of possible ways we can rearrange the system. Take this example. Imagine flipping 10 coins. There's only one way to flip 10 heads. That's a pretty ordered system. But if you wanted to throw five heads and five tails, there are 252 different ways to do that. This way of looking at the overall order of a system is called entropy, and physicists love to talk about entropy. They love it because they can always rely on it for one thing, to keep going up. What do I mean by that? Okay, well, in our coin case, you can imagine that the number of possible ways we can get heads or tails is proportional to the entropy. Flipping 10 heads can only be done one way, and so has very low entropy but flipping five heads and five tails can be done many ways, and so has high entropy. So if you started with 10 coins facing heads and started flipping them, you would tend to a state of higher entropy. The takeaway is entropy always increases in a closed system. You can also think about the entropy of more realistic systems, like the air in the room around you. When you open the door to let some cool air in, the cool air doesn't just stay in the corner. It gradually spreads out and mixes with the warm air, lowering the temperature of the whole room. It goes from a neat, separated system to a messy, mingled system which is impossible to reverse. Try as much as you want, you won't get those cold air particles back to the corner of the room. But hang on, some of the very astute of you may be wondering, but you said entropy always increases. But it is possible that I can start off with five heads and five tails and flip them all heads, making the entropy go down. Explain that, Jade. All right, well spotted. In fact, you're right, that is possible, and it's a key piece of the puzzle in understanding Boltzmann brains. Entropy is a concept governed by statistical fluctuations. The larger the fluctuation, the more unlikely the event is to happen. But while on average entropy always increases, it's very possible to have fluctuations which lower entropy given enough time and dumb luck. So that's entropy. Now let's leave that for a moment and talk about cosmologists, the people concerned with Boltzmann brains and the whole your entire existence may be a simulation thing. The goal of cosmology is to understand the universe on the largest scales. They try to answer questions like what is the entire universe made of? Is it changing over time? Is the universe the same over here as it is over there? Arguably, the holy grail of cosmology is about the origins of the universe. The theory is that the universe started off in a very hot, dense state in the past, a state of very low entropy. The big question is, why? This question is still not entirely answered today, and it's so hard because we have no way, as far as we know, to measure anything before the Big Bang, if the concept of before the Big Bang even means anything. But that hasn't stopped cosmologists from coming up with models about how the universe may have started and evolved. It's hard to summarize an entire active field of research, but one paper by some of the leading physicists in the field summarize it like this. The question then is whether the origin of the universe was a naturally occurring fluctuation, 
or was it due to an external agent which started the system out in a specific low entropy state? Now we'll get into what naturally occurring fluctuation means in a second, but the phrasing of external agent here is just meant to describe any other mechanism of why the universe may have started out the way it did. So here we can finally tackle head on the problem of Boltzmann brains. The guy that Boltzmann brains are named after, Ludwig Boltzmann, was a 19th century physicist whose primary contribution to physics was our modern understanding of particle thermodynamics and gases. Unfortunately, the idea that small particles like atoms and molecules make up matter was highly controversial at the time, due to nobody being able to see them. He spent much of his life fiercely defending his theories against constant attacks by the scientific community, but he was right and much of what we know about thermodynamics and entropy is because of this great man, whose equation is now etched on his tombstone. But what does thermodynamics have to do with cosmology? Remember the holy grail question of cosmology, why did the universe start out the way it did in such a state of low entropy? Well, one answer to that question is that the universe is actually much older than we observe it to be, and the Big Bang was a kind of all coins flip heads type situation. By that I mean it was an astronomical fluctuation which created a region of space with very low entropy, which was the Big Bang, and the evolution of the universe ever since then has just been a consistent increase in entropy like what we would expect. Now that all sounds plausible, but if we stop and think about it for a second, smaller fluctuations in entropy are much more likely than larger ones, would you agree? So it should seem intuitive to think there would have been a smaller fluctuation in entropy, and hence be more likely to have created only half the universe as opposed to the entire universe that we observe. Scratch that, it would be even more likely to simply produce our own galaxy, even more likely to just produce our own solar system, our planet, a single human body, or even a single brain. The Boltzmann brain argument states that it's astronomically more likely for a single brain to spontaneously and briefly fluctuate into existence, complete with false memories of our universe, than it is for the entire universe to have fluctuated into such a low entropy state as the Big Bang. So statistically speaking, you are most likely a Boltzmann brain. I can imagine this doesn't sit well with a lot of you, neither does it sit well with a lot of cosmologists. Of course, in principle, if our theories tell us that we're most likely to be Boltzmann brains, we should believe our theories, right? Well, not necessarily. There have been many arguments that try to come to grips with the problems that arise if we take this view, because it points to a broader issue about how we construct and interpret cosmological theories. I'll try to give the intuition for a couple of the counter arguments here, but the subtleties for each of them will depend on the particulars of the cosmological model we're analyzing. An interesting argument against Boltzmann brains comes from cosmologist and all-round cool dude Sean Carroll, and it's that the very idea of thinking that we might be Boltzmann brains is, in his words, cognitively unstable. This idea is a bit confusing, but this is the best way I know how to sum it up. So what cognitively unstable means is that if our theories tell us that we are Boltzmann brains, the only way that could be the case is that if we are Boltzmann brains simulating everything in the world that we experience. So then because we're Boltzmann brains simulating the real world, we can't really trust any of our observations about the world. So this means that we can't trust our observations that came up with the theories that we are Boltzmann brains. <sighs> Does that make sense? It's a self-contradicting situation and it's what Carol means by unstable. It doesn't settle on a conclusion. It flip-flops between, well, we might be Boltzmann brains, but then if we are, then we can't trust our observations that tell us that we are, but we still might be, but then if we are, we might not be. What's interesting about this argument is that it doesn't rely on empirical data. It's arguing for a particular way of doing science in a consistent way. What are some other, more digestible arguments against Boltzmann brains? Many cosmologists say that our cosmological theories ought to be able to predict that we should be likely to exist. However, in assessing this likelihood, we should take into account the fact that we do exist. Let's break that down. This is an example of what is called the Anthropic Principle, 
and in its simplest form it says that the environment we observe around us is the kind of environment that would allow observers, like us, to exist. This is a powerful idea when used to its full extent, and it's particularly useful in fields like cosmology where the data is limited and you can't really do controlled experiments with the entire universe. However, Talking about probabilities gets complicated and a little precarious in situations where the infinities like potential size and age of the universe come in. So the details of the analysis start to become very important, but suffice it to say that with different Bayesian arguments and taking into account that we exist as a key part of your empirical evidence, then humans in a Big Bang Universe come out over and above these pesky Boltzmann brains. Of course, there is an alternative way of looking at that, which goes back to a more elemental assumption of the observer being able to trust what they see and assume it is real, accurate, and normal. And we'll examine this and some alternative approaches, such as the Anthropic Principle and some of its consequences, in Part 2. The take home message of this video is the fact that cosmologists try to avoid the idea that we're Boltzmann brains isn't because they have a fear that we might actually be one of them. It's more of an interesting thought experiment that points out subtle issues about how we deal with probabilities in our theories when we're asking these big holy grail questions about why the universe is the way it is. As we saw in this video, big ideas like is the universe a simulation seem like nothing more than science fiction if we don't have the basic physical principles to back them up. You can't really understand the idea of Boltzmann brains without first understanding entropy. I like to cover big ideas in my videos, but to do that I need to nail the basics first. One way I do this is by practicing with Brilliant.org. If you'd like an extensive overview of fundamental physics, I highly recommend their course on classical mechanics. It includes quizzes about motion, energy, reference frames, oscillations, and more. Their interactive quiz style really forces you to think about what you're learning, and as any physics professor will tell you, to get any kind of intuition about a topic you need to work through problems. And this couldn't be more true. Every time I look into a quiz I either learn something new or gain a fresh insight. When you are ready to tackle those big ideas, Brilliant has more advanced courses too, like this one on quantum computing, or this one on gravitational physics where you can learn about black holes. Brilliant has more than 50 courses on topics in math, physics and computer science. The first 200 people to click the link below and sign up will get a 20% discount. Just go to brilliant.org slash up and atom. So what do you think? Are you a Boltzmann brain? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.